Yeah, so to make this, we will need a couple, couple of different texture, most of them tiled. Some of them will serve as a mask of the heat inside the, let's say, crevices. And I think we will deal with the material itself, not the particles. There is also a mask that you can see that reveals what is burning and what not. By the way, the further development of this was interesting because then I added the heat distortion particles. There were also dynamic emitters in the form of several vectors, positions. When you scale them, it controlled the radius and intensity. So Z scale was uh, intensity. But later I started to add environment scanning and propagation along this environment. Here you can see it propagating smoothly. So let's say the scale of the cube is the intensity of the heat there, but without any fuel concept or, you know, any burning out. And further along the way, I can convert it into the burning uh, material. Because I don't need such blocks, right? I can use it to reveal a texture. And also a black body node was used to make it uh, properly emissive. Okay, we have that thing. Uh, now we need a matching normal. So come on, normal. Content drawer. By the way, to control the height of the normal, uh, you can use a node that's called flatten normal. <clears throat> there is flatness. And this flatness is the opposite. So I should, what well, I should LARP. I think between flatness uh, 1 and 0. Using this, but unclamped, so no saturate. And then here. Legomi asks if a flat normal isn't just blue. Uh, yeah, the problem is that to that to control the normal strength, you shouldn't touch the Z. You should only scale X and Y. I think. Oh, let's throw it away. We should uh, component mask RG multiply this by normal strength like this and then append blue again okay like so and only then we should normalize now we have that so let's paint some emissive let's paint some emissive uh, so for a second I will replace the base color with a uh, vector, no, vertex color. I want to basically paint the red channel for now. So as you can see, meshes are white in Unreal by default. So let's go to paint. There should be a tab paint. Activate made painting. Right. Here I choose paint. Paint color black, and I paint. And as you can see, mm, unlit, the painting from vertex color goes directly to base color for now. So I can just paint whatever I want with varying strength. By the way, this also automatically trans uh, is uh, baked to LOD 1, 2, and 3. Uh, so very good. Now, I don't recommend vertex paint because it makes a copy of the mesh and if you have a if you have many meshes in the world you know painting them basically makes everything slow and memory heavy and so on but this is a heavy is a fast way to test stuff later you can replace it with textures but is it is a fastest way to actually paint now the base color will be back again what it was but i will use also, 
a thing called black body. What the black body does is it takes a temperature in Kelvins and outputs a color. So let me compile without it first. You said. By the way, tiling is too strong. Uh, tiling like more like one. Okay. Uh, and if I connect black body to emissive, for example, the temperature for now is zero. Let's try temperature 1000. Yeah, you can see it be it's becoming red. Now temperature... Uh, let's make it a, a scalar. Temperature max. Like so. And let's set it to 4000. And we multiply that by this vertex color. So this multiplied by that. Or actually the opposite. The opposite. The black should reveal. Uh, so 1 minus x. Yeah. Now the problem is that the super hot areas shouldn't be that frequent. That it basically goes very quickly towards them. Hmm. So we can either change the painting or we can take that and apply a power to it. For example, a square root power two. And the transition should be better because you know, uh, linearly increasing brightness, I mean light, isn't linear to our eyes, right? Yeah, so you can see the nice automatic colorization the black body gives us from almost white through yellow through orange to deep dark red. Now I can change the temperature max, for example, 3000. And it ends up as a yellow. If I do 5000 as a max in black body, it's actually white. Uh, 3000 should be cool. Now I can increase, or even 2500, and now I can increase emission brightness like this. Yeah, making for a much more saturated look. Okay, so we have our painting. Now we would like to apply this, but only within this kind of crevices, not in the top spots. And hive map is here. So I want the heat to be weaker on the top of the hype map. So the first thing I would do is I would invert the hype map. Okay. And now as a very, very simple test, I will multiply the vertex color with this hype map result. So the hype map looks like this. And I will multiply that. So Oh, it's already becoming very problematic to manage. Go here. Uh, uh, uh. Okay, so this is like a uh, great comment. Painting. This. This is convert heat to color. And this is our hive map that I will apply onto this painting. Mm. So come here. Okay, so I have my painting data. And I multiplied it with the inverted hive map. Yep, so as you can see, the top of the hive map erased the heat like this. Now, this is too strong. This is too harsh. So I have to remap this hive map. Remap value range. Let me preview. Uh, so this is how it looks like naturally by default, like this. Unlit. 
And what I want to do is to remap this. I want this inversion. So the original zero, sorry, original one and original zero will be mapped to, uh, for example, ah, uh, no, sorry, mm, to zero to one. So let's say original 0 0.6 to 0. This, uh, this is the original. Like start with a note, that one. And this is after the remap. Like this. So if I just did original 1 to 0 remaps to 0 to 1, I would just invert this. So as you can see, dark in the crevices after inversion, white in the crevices. But now I can also remap it so that original 0 0.3 becomes the new black and original 0 becomes white. Like this. So this way I can ensure that even lower hive won't get any heat. Uh, but also I want to bump the bottom. So original 0 0.1 will become maximum heat. Like this. Mm, good. Now I multiply this. So let's make a comment out of it. Comments. More burning in the crevices. And here it should be read heat intensity from the painting data. So I have my inverted and slightly contrasted hive map, multiplying vertex color, then it goes to black body. You can see what's going on. That it reaches the tops later at a higher value. So a short recap, what we did so far for those who joined right now. This is a material made of uh, a base color, of course. And then we are also reading a vertex color that I painted in Unreal, like so. Yeah, the vertex color. So vertex color put through a multiplication by maximum temperature in Kelvins then black body, which converts temperature to color, like this. But this is, looks very flat, right? So that's why we have this hive map remapped slightly that we multiplied the heat information with. And only then it goes to black body. So now it is like this. Mm -hmm. So this is it. But as you can see, it's very static. And by the way, this entire project, this, this material, it was used for this. But you can see one detail that distinguishes this from the version we have now. Uh, here, there is something animating, there is something moving in the heat. So we'll do it in a second. You can also see how Partial heat is converted to the charred base color, the, the charcoal. Slightly darker, right? Uh-huh. So there was also a version, I don't have it here, I think. Dynamic propagation of heat. That actually follows the surface. Took me too much of my life. So at some point when I had to calculate the math, here we go. <laughs> Map coordinates. Unpacking the positions into 2D. So after fitting all this in my head, I couldn't sleep. That's how it felt. Back to our material. Here it is. Now we should animate something in the ins inside. So let me drop a heat noise. This thing, a blurry noise that we'll use. Okay. Or maybe black and white. Yeah, it should be enough, I think. No, let's use the colored one. So take a look. 
We have my, my, our hive map influencing this, but we can also drag and drop that. By the way, it should be of type uh, masks. It's not RGB, so remember about that. Masks. Now with these masks, uh, let me first display them like this, start keeping note. Okay, here they are. I want them to move. So, uh, so we need to project them by the way, because if we move UVs, it will be weird. Take a look, uh, UVs follow the surface. So if it were UVs, the wrong method, now we have this, we have panner node, coordinate and speed like uh, anim speed, heat animation speed one and UVs. You can see how they move. Actually speed should be vector two, so append only move and Y, uh, like so. Okay, so it moves. Here it looks cool, but it doesn't look cool because if we if we apply this, let's say to the base color, the movement will follow the UVs, which can be rotated differently. Uh, yeah, you can see what's going on. On the, ah, let's disable emissive for a while. Yeah, you can see how it moves in different directions and there are seams. So it's not good. It's not good. So what we want to do instead is to use uh, a triplanar projection. So automatic projection from all three sides with a blending uh, area. So what was it? Word aligned texture. Word aligned texture. Yeah, we have our texture object. So this is not good. We need an object. So text object. A heat noise. Yeah. Texture size is the tiling. So uh, it will be heat noise tiling. Uh, by default, let's say one. It's texture size in centimeters, I think. So zero, zero, one. Uh, word position is okay. Export float for false. Normal, I don't care. Projection transition contrast one. Okay. We can actually now take this XYZ texture. And here it looks the same because is just, you know, word projected. Uh, no, it doesn't. One. What is the scale? What are the units of this stuff? I don't know. Or is it scaled in meters? So bigger is more. Okay, sorry. So it's not inverted, it's not tiling. It's texture, noise, size or scale actually size uh yeah uh so the bigger the bigger the texture 200 is one size of the texture is two meters okay now when we show this on the object it's too big so let's do 100 or even 50 cool now it's not moving, but here we have word position. So let me delete that. We have hit animation speed. Let's make make vec make float three. Hit anim speed will be Z. The others will be zero. And I add this to the word position. So word position. Uh, excluding material shader offsets. That's important because if you add any tessellation, any bump, we don't want this to affect it. So excluding, now add. And this heat emission speed 
should be multiplied by time. Uh, so time multiplied by this. So the time that has passed since the start of the game or something will be added to the word position. And this will go here. Okay. And let's multiply it by the heat nose size, I think. Yeah, you can see it moving. This doesn't move because this is not actual 3D noise. Uh, from its per This is projected from left and from front and from top. So as you can see from this perspective, nothing will change because we just move the Z, right? It's not a true 3D noise. Uh, I think we can cheat that. I mean, we don't... We could do it properly with 3D noise, but this would be expensive. So instead, we should just slightly, I think, uh, add some animation in other axes. So let's do... Hit animation speed will be vector 3. Vector 3 will be like uh, 0 0.1 and 1. Then I will multiply that. Oh, so as you can see, slight movement in Y axis as well. Now multiply this. And then multiply it by the heat noise size. Heat noise size. Uh oh. Mm -hmm. Okay. Make float free? No. Then I multiply this by time to get the actual, you know, offset. Other asks if I didn't make this 3D texture. No, I don't want to make a 3D texture because uh, it's uh, more computationally expensive. Of course, in this uh, case, it will look great, but not this time. I think in this case is too simple. Okay, now something is moving in Y. And mostly it's moving in Z. Now let's invert this. Hit anim speed minus 1. So it goes up. Uh, and this should be minus 0, 1. Or minus 0, 2. Now, I want to use that to influence... To influence... This heat. What can I do? Actually, I don't think if I need all channels. I'm not sure. Let's see. Let's do a component mask for now. Let's only take, for example, green uh, from this. I mean, I know it's a waste of cycles, but for now. Let's only take the green. Okay. Now I multiply that with... With... Uh, Heat, noise, strength. By default, it will be weaker, like 0 0.3. Okay. Let me remap this. Remap value range. This mask from old 0 to 1. I will remap it from minus 0, 3 to 0, 3. Um, like this. Convert to heat color. So now this texture is being remapped between minus zero three to zero three, and uh, and then added to the heat before converting to color. Let's try. Ah, sorry. I should add it to as emissive color for now. Right. So it clearly affects it. Affects it. Uh, if I have heat noise strength zero, it's the original thing. Right. This painting with hive map applied. But now zero point one, and you can already see this influencing it. Now we have a problem, because it also adds in the areas that are fu fully dark. 
so they should be masked out completely. This is what, where we need Hiveflurp. Uh, let me find you an example. So what Hiveflurp does is it takes a gradient and let's say perturbs the original gradient through a texture. So we can see that the texture of these pebbles is affecting the gradient. So this is what we need with this heat map. So that black areas are not affected. Okay, so our heat is transition phase. Hive texture is this. And now contrast, we will see. The default is zero. We will see. So what I was showing here is was my custom code. But I think the Unreal built one should be okay. Yeah, it works. So as you can see, if we didn't have uh, Hive Lerp, if it was just the heat, it looks like this. And now with Hive Lerp, it's actually kind of too strong, I would say, the transition. But you can see the effect of the texture. But I wonder if really this half gives us neutral. Let's see. Zero. No. So as you can see, half is not neutral. But that's bad. That's really bad. Because at contrast zero, I would expect, you know, at the half half, I would totally expect the neutral transition phase. I know what we can do. Mm. Instead of lerping here, we can lerp the result. So let's use it as a hive texture, actually. Neutral one. Uh, a neutral one. Let's get rid of this. And after applying this hive lerp, oh, come on. Wait a second. Okay. Again, I have my texture. I take the green channel out of it, like so. This is it. Moving in Z. Uh, now I apply the high flurp using this texture and my heat noise strength will lerp between the original one, the original heat, and this modified heat. And only here, heat noise strength. And this will go to black body. Subtix, you just joined. So what we did here was uh, reading the painting from vertex color. Now applying a hive map to it so that the higher pieces of the wood don't get as much heat. Then there's this animated texture to animate the heat itself. And then we convert it through black body to actual emissive color. So black body converts it to red, yellow, and white, depending on the brightness. Okay, so now I lerp between the version modified by Hive, uh, Hive Lerp and the standard, standard one without this noise applied. So let's see. I will save that. Heat noise strength is zero, so it should be the original. Yeah, it is. Mm, it is. And now heat noise one. Yeah, you can see it working. So let's say 0 0.1, 0 0.2. It controls this. Maximum value should be one. Yeah. So zero point four, and now more brightness, I think. So where is it? Temperature max, I don't know, 4,000. It's in Kelvins, yeah. Okay, back to lit. You can see it working nice. Oh, I used the wrong texture, yeah. Oh, and the roughness is not here. Let me add roughness. Roughness. Metallic roughness occlusion. So roughness goes here. 
occlusion goes here. Yeah, better. Ah, the UVs. UVs multiplied by tiling. Right. By the way, we can make use of a new feature which is a teleport node. So I double click to create a reroute node, right click, convert to name reroute. And oh my God. And I will call that this thing. I will call them tiled UV. And as you can see, now I have very nice uh, graph because this node is tele the value is teleported here so much cleaner much cleaner graph like so yeah subtext this is new in ue5 and i'm glad that you look the result visually okay this is super neat because now I can detangle the entire graph like this. Like this. Oh, come on. Okay, now these. Uh, now this thing. Uh, it will be animate noise animated noise or animated word space noise by the way this is word space noise so when i move this object hey where are the arrows what i can't click on anything ah i'm in painting mode sorry <laughs> Uh, this is word space noise, so the noise stays in place when I move this. I don't know if you can see this, but it stays in place. So if you really need to move your objects, you should replace all that word aligned textured with local aligned textured. I think we may actually do this because it makes more sense in that regard, in this example. So local aligned text. Ah, no, but then we can't uh, modify our word position. Okay, whatever. Word aligned texture, let it be. Or I can ch change actually absolute word position to, uh, to local. Uh, like this. Why is it so slow? It's previewing. Uh, stop previewing. Cool. So I have my absolute word position, excluding material offsets. Then I just transform, it's important, not transform, transform position. Transform position from absolute word space to local space. I do that and I use this instead of word position. And you'll be able to see that then it will stay together with the object. Now, if I move that, it moves together with it, the entire noise. So yeah, transforming from word to local. Mm. And move it. I can put it into word position because it's just a name. It doesn't care what it actually is. The material is here, burning beautifully, working like we want it. See you. Cheers.